Hello, beautiful people. My name is Athel, and this is the Chain of Seduction. So today, I want to talk a little bit more about the consummation link, the final link in the Chain of Seduction. And yesterday, I talked about how we want to make the sex itself good. And if the sex itself is good, that's going to help improve the relationship momentum. And if the sex is bad, it's going to make the, you know, the relationship momentum get worse, which means overall the relationship is not as good. And what I find is that many people have very little idea about what really turns them on and even less idea about what turns their partner on. So this video is really about let's find a way to have some sort, some sort of shared language so that we can sort of identify what we're into and identify what our partner is into. So this is essentially the same sort of thing I've done with the attraction and the comfort link. I'm going to talk about six brands of sexuality. And something to be really aware of is that often with these brands of sexuality, they may make no rational sense to you. Um, these tend to tap into things from both our upbringing and our sort of primal time before writing sexual wiring. So we really may have no conscious understanding about why we're turned on by certain things or why certain things really don't turn us on. And when we talk about true erotic potential, a lot of it is not terribly politically correct. Um, you know, for the, the nice guy who is sort of thinks of himself as a feminist, the idea that he can get some sort of sexual enjoyment from sexually dominating a woman is extremely counterintuitive. If you see yourself as the high-powered, strong, independent woman and you are discovering that you know, part of you has this wiring for sexual submissiveness, this goes completely against the grain. And there's all sorts of things that are not terribly politically correct. So put that off to one side and have a sense of what actually really turns you on. So the first two brands of sexuality I just kind of touched on. One is dominance and the other one is submissiveness. So someone who is sexually dominant actually gets sexual enjoyment, a little thrill, from telling people what to do in the bedroom, from setting direction, from taking the lead, from making someone else accept something they are doing, or demanding that someone else attend to them in a certain way. The flip side is, of course, the submissives who enjoy being given direction, enjoy being told what to do, enjoy being told to you know, lie there and take what I'm doing here, or alternatively, enjoy being told I'm going to lie here and you're going to do this to me. The next brand of sexuality is the sensuals. The sensual people enjoy the whole thing of the setting the scene, of the staging, of the the, the th you know the th high thread count sheets, the, the candles lit, the music playing, the glass of wine, the long, slow, luxurious massages, the long, slow, deep kissing, kissing before they get to the point of actually having and enjoying the sex. And often with the people who are into the whole sensual thing, they show signs of sexual interest that are really subtle. For them going off and having a 45 minute bath and shaving their legs perfectly smooth and making sure they're wearing the, you know, the perfect amount of perfume and making sure everything is perfectly set to scene. These are often ways that the central person initiates and it's not terribly direct or in your face and sometimes it can really be missed. Or if you're just jumping straight through to what you want, the sensual person often feels like it was all rushed. They wanted it to go a little slower. Kind of the flip side to the sensual people are the people who have the rough brand of sexuality. And that doesn't mean that they like it violent. It doesn't mean they like to necessarily be hurt, but it does mean they like a high degree of physical intensity with the sex. And this can kind of pair pretty well to those who are also submissives. And this is one of those ones where it's, again, it's terribly politically incorrect to think I'm going to be rough during sex. And I've talked to a number of guys who are terrified that they're going to hurt their wives or they're going to do something to their wife and she's going to completely flip out and say he's some sort of horrible abuser. 
the reality for a lot of those situations though is that the guys tend to want to want themselves to only be working in that sort of one to maybe three level of roughness and intensity and often the wife is more in tune to doing it between you know level four five and six so often it takes a lot to actually push the guys to get to the point where the wife is actually saying okay i'm not wanting any more than this the fifth brain of sexuality are the responsives and these are the people who get their greatest level of sexual enjoyment that they are tuned on the most by their partner's reaction to what's happening. So if their partner is turned on, if their partner is orgasming, if their partner is saying it's wonderful, that is their greatest level of enjoyment. And it's true that there are an awful lot of guys who are responsive. And they, their primary complaint is that their wife is not into it. Their wife is not turned on. She didn't want the orgasm. She wasn't moaning and groaning because that's something they need. That's something they need to feel fully turned on themselves and fully enjoy the sex themselves. And when you have two people that are responsives or maybe a responsive and a submissive, Often you kind of get these sort of sexual standoffs where each person is waiting for the other one to set the agenda, set some direction and make things happen and be tuned on. And you can kind of have these mutual submission deadlocks, you get these sort of mutual waiting for the other person to respond deadlocks. And in these situations, someone's just got to take the lead and say what it is they want and get the ball rolling. And the sixth and final brain of sexuality is taboo. There are many people who have been brought up in some kind of repressive sexual environment who have been told to say no to everything and anything remotely sexual, uh, told not to do it, shamed for it, who get in a lot of erotic power from, in a sense, breaking the rules and being naughty. So for these people, breaking the rules, being naughty, being kinky, being dirty, whatever that is in their head, this provides them with the greatest level of sexual turn on. So often they are someone who are into being somewhat exhibitionistic or voyeuristic or liking a whole range of positions or liking things like anal sex and oral sex, things that are somewhat more taboo than just the vanilla. So those are the six brands of sexuality. There's dominance and submission. There's sensual and rough. And there is responsive and taboo. And we are all into these six brands of sexuality to at least some degree. But often for one person, there's one or two brands that is the greatest level of turn on. And if you can figure out what your partner is really into, and you can figure out what you're really into, that can really clarify where do you spend your time and attention in the bedroom. That's going to help you create the sexual experiences that are going to get you those plus one, plus two, plus three moments that are going to improve the relationship momentum, make the relationship happier, more content, more sexual. And it's going to get both of you what you want and it's going to stop you chasing your tail, pursuing the sex that maybe one of you really just doesn't like, or the, the sex that, one, that the two of you just don't really want. So, that's about it. Going to leave it there. I hope you liked the video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, all that good internet stuff. And I will talk to you tomorrow.